Welcome back. The Democratic field of candidate candidates making a play for the Oval Office. You know what it is doing. Growing over the weekend, Senators Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar threw their hats in the ring. But the two women launched their campaigns with two very different tones. I will fight my heart out so that every kid in America can have the same opportunity I had, a fighting chance to build something real. I will never give up on you or on your children and their future. I am in this fight all the way. I'm asking you to look up, to look at each other, to look at the future before us. Let us rise to the occasion and meet the challenges of our day. Let us cross the river of our divides and walk across our sturdy bridge to higher ground. Christine Quinn, Evan Siegfried back with me. All right. Those two women had very, very different messages. Amy Klobuchar was talking about unity and being a, being a bridge builder. And Elizabeth Warren said, I am a fighter. I'm here to fight. I think she said fighter 28 times. <laughs> um, what do you make of these two messages? Well, you know, I think ultimately the right message is going to be a combination of the two, because Americans have have said clearly, as you said before, Evan, that they want government to function, but they also want someone who's going to stand up for them. Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to have to put both of these messages together to really get a winning message. But I think they both, each woman kind of tracked with their history and who they are and the message they, that, that they started off with. Evan, should the president be afraid of these two senators? I think he should be afraid of whomever the Democratic nominee is going to be because I think the country's very angry at him. I think that Amy Klobuchar, you know, I was reminded of with the snow, uh, Muskie and his announcement on the New Hampshire uh, uh, State House steps when everybody said he was crying because the snow was melting in his face. And that didn't happen. So as an aide, I was having agita for uh, Amy Klobuchar. But I think Amy Klobuchar is also going to have to go over her record. We had Harry Reid who had to lecture her for mistreatment of staff. And then we also had when she was in, in charge of criminal prosecutions in Minneapolis, violent crime surged 29 percent. She's got to talk about that. And why did that happen? And why does that make her qualified to be a tough on crime, tough on Trump and be presidential? And at the same time, you had Elizabeth Warren coming off a disastrous week where the narrative of she never personally claimed that she was a Native American was completely destroyed by The Washington Post, finding that she did do so when she was registering for the Texas bar. I think that How about, and, and we forget all the things that President Trump right. has ever that's said about, about himself. Is. But that's a what about ism. You want, Democrats have been saying we want somebody to be higher up uh, and more moral. And what about ism is the argument being made that minimizes and deflects from the misconduct of others. And I think it's wrong. Can I say, as it relates to Amy, I am so sick and tired of almost every time a woman steps forward to move up in position, whether it's political or in business or anywhere, she is all of a sudden the meanest, cruelest manager in the world. I'm sure Donald Trump is a peach to work for, because every time you turn around, he's told Twitter and the world, you're about to get fired. Insert this Hillary Clinton. Really good point. But I've, had, I've worked in the Senate. I've talked to many other people who've worked in the Senate, for men and women, and they say that they're good bosses. When you have to be taken away over and are taken aside by the majority it, leader for throwing a binder okay, at a, a staffer no, and hitting a them. But look, that's a problem. That's I, did, did Harry Reid confirm that he that, that he that he pulled her aside and had this conversation? I don't believe he did. It's been confirmed by sources and in but the not report. Harry, Harry, Reid, Harry Reid has not confirmed And the whole it. reason these stories are coming out are because of ex-staffers of Amy no, Klobuchar are saying think, it's a temperament think, issue. No. Tell me examples. And I would be saying this. Show me an example. Man. Really? Show yeah. me an no. example. Absolutely. You would not. I would absolutely. No, if a man were threw a binder at a staffer, First I absolutely all, would. Every time, almost every time, a woman steps forward, all of a sudden there are these unnamed sources, and Harry Reid is not confirmed. For basically saying she was a bossy bitch. Yeah. I never heard that about Tulsi Gabbard. I never heard that about Elizabeth Warren. I didn't hear that about Kamala Harris or Kirsten Gillibrand. I didn't it hear that about It is a classic sex. This oh, you did. People trashed Hillary as a boss. Don't yes. go there. That is a fact that was part of the trash campaign against her. Democrats were? Over and over. What Democrats were coming forward and saying she was a terrible boss? Any woman, you could insert so many women's names into Amy Cloverdash in that article. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of a man who is ambitious and moving up, being smart, strategic, tough, forceful, strong. Tough. And a woman is just a bitch. Tell, give me an example of when we called a man bossy. 
when we've called a man bossy. Yeah. We've talked about Ted Cruz. We've talked about. And we've many called others. him the word bossy. Well, we've called him a little bit of a suck up, and uh, those That's are two different things. Those different. are two very different, 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 different things. When a woman stands up and is strong and commanding, she's called bossy. When a man stands up and does the same thing, people say he's strong. But don't take Tough. our word for it. Let's listen to what Amy Klobuchar said on Good Morning America this today. Well, first of all, I love my staff. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am and we wouldn't be able to pass all those bills and do all that work if we didn't have great staff. I am tough. I push people. That is true. But my point is, is that I have high expectations for myself. I have high expectations for the people that work for me. And I have high expectations for this country. It's a pretty good response. No, that's a great political response, but it doesn't get to the underlying character. And the people, the stories are not coming out from random people. The people who are going out and talking about it are the people who used to work for her, who are afraid of retribution for actually coming out and saying it unnamed on record. Unnamed sources. Unnamed sources. Now you sound like Donald Trump. If it's an unnamed source, it can't be true. It, no, it's just classically a, a pattern here of women who are seeking higher positions. It's a pattern. That's what this is about. It's less about Amy than it is about the reality that this happens to okay. woman after woman and you cannot as the intelligent person you are say that there isn't a pattern of women being called bitches and too tough to work for and nasty and men not and evan to your point about unnamed sources there's a few categories for unnamed sources there are people who are whistleblowers yes who are saying i am standing up for the betterment of the consumer or this country or this company and then there are unnamed sources that are disgruntled, that feel marginalized, that are mad that they're not in the spotlight. So we do have to just put it in a broader context. And and I also wanted, and so let's just say, before we completely move on, if it's not Amy Klobuchar or Elizabeth Warren, is there a candidate or is there a movement that President Trump should be most worried about? Is it those who are moving far to the left or those who could move to the center? I personally think that Joe Biden is the smartest pick for Democrats. And I actually also believe that Amy Klobuchar would be a great bottom half of the ticket as VP. Because as we Not saw her... Bossy. Oh, come now. I think what we saw her, she was an effective prosecutor in the Kavanaugh hearings. And her questioning, I respected the heck out of. I didn't agree with her on it. But I thought she was very good and demonstrated why she should be in the Senate and what, as an effective senator for Minnesota. But why does she have to, you know, as a woman senator, she has to demonstrate she should be, have a right to be in the Senate? The people elected her. She has right to be in the Senate. That's just, and it's not intentional, Evan, but that's just the kind of way we talk about women and we don't even realize it. We wouldn't have said about a man's testimony that he proved his worth to be in the Senate. These are big issues that permeate our society and we have to think about them very honestly as men and women, because women do it too to other women, For maybe sure. even worse. But she deserves to be in the Senate because she was elected, not because she had a good day of questioning. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.